A couple dozen neo-Nazis marched through downtown Nashville on Saturday. The group apparently calls itself Blood Tribe and was founded in 2020 by a former Marine named Christopher Polhaus. Liberals were quick to denounce the demonstrators as evidence that right-wing Trump supporters are taking America down a dark path. But the liberal outcry and media coverage quickly died down when an inconvenient clip of the group and its leader from last September em- emerged and began to spread across the internet. Christopher, there's a presidential race going on right now. Are you going to vote in 2024? What do you think is going to happen? With My vote is useless. I think Biden's better than Trump because he sends rockets to Ukraine. <laughs> in, the, in support of Ukraine, you mean? Hell Ukraine, hell Azov. Love- So for those who are having a difficult time tracking this story, and I I can understand why, the neo-Nazi march was led by a guy who's endorsing Joe Biden in 2024 because Biden supports sending weapons to Ukraine, a country currently at war with Russia after Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine specifically to denazify it, even though Ukraine is currently led by a Jew. All of which reveals an eternal truth denied by simpletons on both sides of the aisle. Politics makes for strange bedfellows. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. Assistant Health Secretary Richard Levine, who now calls himself Rachel, has a a dire warning this Black History Month, and that is, of course, that global warming is racist. We will get to that in a moment. First, though, I've got to tell you about one of my very favorite companies on planet Earth, and that would be Good Ranchers. Go to GoodRanchers.com, use code Knowles. Did you know that over 5 billion pounds of meat are imported and sold in the U.S. every year? That is why you need Good Ranchers. They are the number one source for 100% American meat that I trust to feed my own family. I had a a very difficult moment last night. I was eating a nice dish with chicken and broccoli that Elisa had made. The chicken was off. It was not as as good as the chicken usually is. The dish was excellent, but I said, this is not good rancher's chicken because we've eaten all of our good rancher's meat and I now clearly need to like double my subscription size. Right now, when you subscribe to any of their boxes, you will secure their leap year offer of free bacon for four years. That is over 70 pounds of Applewood smoked bacon you will get just by subscribing. Not sure which box to try? Get their bestseller, The Rancher's Classic. Or if you've got a hungry household, Check out their Family Feast bundle. What are you waiting for? Get quality local food you can trust and feel proud to feed to your family. It is the best quality on the market. The prices cannot possibly be beat. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Pick your box. Use code Knowles. Get the meat that you can trust from a company that shares your values. GoodRanchers.com. Code Knowles. Claim over 900 bucks in free bacon before their leap year sale ends. GoodRanchers.com. American meat delivered. A lot of people, the minute they saw this neo-Nazi march, they said, these guys are feds. And there's no question that federal agents uh, sometimes, frequently, pose as far-right, extreme, neo-Nazi figures to try to generate uh, a a lot of controversies. Uh, That happens with with some frequency. Uh, Here, though, I don't think that's what's going on. Uh, There's there's no doubt in my mind that this guy, Christopher Polhaus, is a, a real guy. We know about his background. At least the leader of this group wasn't wearing... Uh, some kind of a mask. And I kind of believe his argument. I think his argument is, he says, my vote doesn't matter. So he's saying, I want a more extreme version of, of political revolution than is possible within the current landscape. But if I had to pick between Biden and Trump, I would pick Biden because Biden is arming Ukraine. You actually see this if you delve into the far fringes of of the internet, the, the far left or the far right, you'll notice that a lot of the neo-Nazi types are really into Ukraine. It's kind of funny because in, in real life, in regular life, it's the centrist liberals who are the most excited about funding Ukraine. But I, I guess it's just it's just evidence of the of the point that I've made for some years now, which is that politics makes for very strange bedfellows. I totally see how you could arrive at this neo-Nazi's conclusion, given his sort of strange premises. But it is, it is just chef's kiss, beautiful 
irony that that the the big splashy headlines neo nazis march in nashville this is clearly an example of trump's degradation of our politics oh wait a second he's endorsing biden Ugh, never mind <laughs> Anyway, bye-bye. We'll see that story later. Also, speaking of violence in Nashville, I want you all to know, moments, mere moments before this show began this morning, I was rear-ended in Nashville while driving to the studio by a teenage girl. And I only mention it not because I want your pity. I don't want your pity. It takes more than a Honda sedan to take down a bull moose or whatever the car was. I don't know. It. The reason I mention it is because you will recall just about a month ago, our poor Professor Jacob, associate producer on this show, was also hit by a teenage girl driving in Nashville, which is why I am calling for a complete and total shutdown on teenage girl drivers until we figure out what the hell is going on. Now, speaking of women, and also speaking of racial politics, Joy Reid, has a curious claim about American history. And her curious claim is that she built the country. I mean, to be a, a black person in, you know, 2024 in America is to be in a state of complete perplexed confusion about what is wrong with a country that hates your history, to this day can't admit even the basics of what was done to your ancestors. And to find out that literally Barack Obama's two terms in pre as president are your reparations. And Juneteenth, which you already celebrated anyway, is your reparations. And yet, you built this country. You literally physically built this country. And yet, the attitude toward you from a lot of your peers and your fellow citizens is just shut up and be grateful. That is certainly my attitude to Joy Reid. That's true. It's not my attitude to all people or to all black people, but it is certainly my attitude to, to Joy Reid. Joy Reid's parents are immigrants. Joy Reid's father came from Congo. Joy Reid's mother came from Guyana. Joy Reid is a first generation American. Not one single person in her family tree had any connection to slavery. Not one single person in her family tree was here more than one generation ago. Joy Reid has had absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with the building of this country. Her effect on America has only been negative <laughs> in as much as she goes on left-wing cable news shows and yaps and, and degrades our country. Uh, but beyond that, let's take Joy Reid out of her commentary for a moment. She's saying this is, this is really awful because to be a black person in America today is to know that you built this country. Your ancestors are brought over here in chains and you built this country and you get nothing for it. No affirmative action, no special programs, no DEI, no this, no that. She's ignoring all of those things. She says you get nothing for it even though your ancestors built this country. But what that ignores is that for a huge number of black people in America today, their ancestors had nothing to do with building this country. Because 12% of black people in the United States today are immigrants. Just that number alone, I think, totally destroys any argument that America is systemically racist toward black people. Any of the George Floyd BLM Marxist nonsense. The fact that 12%, a full 12% of American black people today are immigrants. They chose to come here totally destroys that argument. But in addition to that, and another 9% of black people in America today are the children of immigrants. Meaning that 21%, little more than one in five black people in America today have absolutely no historical connection to the country. And yet we are told they are robbed of what they are owed for their ancestors' contributions. They are systematically discriminated against and they deserve Reparations. Reparations for what? If there were to be a system of reparations for slavery, Joy Reid would be the first person in line with her hand out asking for them. She, she is here. That is what she is asking for here. At the very least, I think all reasonable people should agree that Joy Reid has no claim on reparations. But the, the same could be said of, of at least one in five black people currently in the United States. And that doesn't take into account people two to three generations ago 
whose, whose ancestors immigrated here long after slavery. Seems to me the woman undercuts her own argument by her very character. Now, speaking of racial politics, my friend Ann Coulter uh, just displayed what Bill Maher described as a superpower on his show, this in response to a mass shooting. I mean, we don't know who did this shooting, by the way, the, the, the Super Bowl shooting. We have we, some idea. What? If it were a white man shooting, we'd know. Who? <laughs> Well, we don't know, but they, I mean, they that's how we know it's not a white man. I can tell you that much. Do you think they were, they were repressing that reporting? They wouldn't tell us about the um, transgender woman that shot up the Christian school for what, like a year? Um, oh, San Bernardino out here. Remember the crazy terrorist Muslims? I, that's when I first noticed, hmm, they're not telling us who it is. I, it's not a white male. <laughs> the longer they go without telling you, it's not a white male. Okay, well, we don't, we, for this one, for right now, as of Friday night, February 16th, we, know. we, don't, we don't officially know. Okay, you know you have special powers. Um, and those special powers are called common sense. What's funny is Anne is sitting here on a panel with Van Jones, who is the black, fairly liberal, but somewhat more reasonable uh, CNN commentator. And you'll notice Van Jones is quiet during this whole exchange, because Van Jones knows that Anne is right. And as of now, by the way, there are a lot of there are a lot of um, thoughts and suggestions as to who the, the shooter is. We actually still don't know for sure. There was there was a picture of a guy getting arrested at the chief's parade that actually was not the shooter. So the, the authorities are not telling us much about the identity of the uh, of the perpetrators. Uh, but to Anne's point, we know. <laughs> we know because this is always the case. Anne has been making this point for years that the longer it takes for the media to report on the race and sex of the shooter, the less likely it is that that's a white man. That, and it drops off precipitously. When it's a white guy, you know immediately. When it's a white guy, you get the manifesto ASAP. When it's not a white guy, when it's a lady, whatever, then the FBI is going to keep that manifesto under lock and key. It's all going to be very vague. Certainly when it's a, a black person, it's all, it's just, you know, suspect. There's no mention of anything. The only group that we are encouraged to target and malign, discriminated against by law, yes, but also culturally to insult and malign, is straight white men who know that they're men. That's the only group. And so that, that's the group you're going to see in the headlines. In an age of absurdity, common sense seems like a superpower. Now, there are a lot of different superpowers. Some can make you fly. Some can make you see through walls. One way you can see through your walls is with windows, and that's why you got to check out Renewal by Anderson. Text Knowles to 200-300. For most homeowners, window replacement is not something they've done before. It might be a daunting task. Luckily, there is a company that will do the work for you. Renewal by Anderson is your one-stop shop for window design, manufacture, and installation. Windows play a crucial role in regulating indoor temperatures. If you notice a spike in your heating or cooling bills, it might be due to inefficient windows. Don't put it off any longer. Renewal by Anderson offers limited, fully transferable, and best-in-the-nation warranty coverage. Right now, Renewal by Anderson is offering a free in-home consultation on quality, energy-efficient, affordable windows or patio doors with special financing options. Text Knowles, Canada WLES, to 200 300 for a free consultation to buy one window or door and get one 40% off. Plus, you'll get 200 bucks off your entire purchase. These savings won't last long. Be sure to check it out by texting Knowles, Canada WLES, to 200 300 That is Knowles, Canada WLES, to 200 300 Texting privacy policy and terms and conditions posted at textplan.us. Texting enrolls for recurring automated text marketing messages. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop to opt out. Minimum purchase required. Interest accrues from data purchase, but is waived if paid within promotional period. Go to windowappointmentnow.com for full offer details. Speaking of common sense and an age of absurdity, there was a horrifically sacrilegious showing at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York uh, just over the past few days. St. Patrick's Cathedral is the most magnificent church in the United States. I'm a New Yorker, so I've spent a lot of time in St. Pat's over, over the years. Uh, it's just a, a beautiful Gothic cathedral in New York City, and it's it's considered America's parish church. And a bunch of a 
a major scandal. The, the church has come out, condemned this. There was a massive reparation that was said, uh, you know, a, a special mass in, uh, in reparation, in, in a sort of penance for this awful sacrilege that took place there. Uh, unfortunately, I, I do know there are some members of the clergy who are not totally opposed to this sort of thing, who are who are much more uh, radical leftist sexual political activists, and much more focused on that than they are on their religious obligations. Uh, the, the whole episode, though, brings up a line that uh, Ed Fazer, the philosopher, r- reminded us of. He posted this to social media. It's a line from Plato from The Republic. And the line is, all the pleasures of a dissolute life produce the sting of mania. Then the master passion runs wild and takes madness into its service. Any opinions or desires with a decent reputation and any feelings of shame still left are killed or thrown out until all discipline is swept away and madness usurps its place. Isn't this the reason why the passion of sex has for so long been called a tyrant? Under the tyranny of the master passion, one becomes in his waking life what he was once only occasionally in his dreams. And there's nothing, no taboo, no murder, however terrible, from which he will shrink. His passion tyrannizes over him, a despot without restraint or law. Every man who has ever lived knows that this is true. What, what Plato is saying, brought to us by way of Ed Fazer, which is that the, the pleasures of a dissolute life, in particular, uh, sexual passions, when you let your sexual passions run wild, it produces a craziness. It produces a mania. You do things that you would never otherwise do if, if you were in command of your faculties. Even at the most basic level, when you get a little too into a girl or something, you say, oh, why did I behave that way? Why did I say that? I was acting totally crazy. And certainly when you follow really deviant desires like these people are doing, it leads them to do really crazy things, like dress up like a woman, like go into the middle of a church and start shrieking obscenities and degrading yourself and calling yourself a whore and, and calling your, your deceased loved one a whore and all just totally wacky, crazy stuff that's obviously contrary to nature. That's what happens. And if you don't bring that passion into line, if you don't discipline that passion and order it toward its proper place, it is going to tyrannize you. It's going to drive you crazy to the point that even otherwise rational, reasonable people will look you dead in your eye and tell you that a man can actually be a woman. One of the most absurd claims you could possibly make, otherwise normal people, people with degrees from Harvard and Princeton and Yale, people who who work at fancy jobs, people who work for the federal government, will look you in the eye and tell you that. Not because they've arrived at some amazing scientific conclusion, some new discovery, but because they have allowed their sexual passions to become so disordered and so exaggerated that it's going to totally overwhelm their reason. Reason be damned, they're going to follow their bizarre lusts. That's what happens. Plato knew it. The great doctors of the church knew it. Every wise thinker has known that for all of history. And yet today we throw that out the window and we pretend that there's some kind of right for a man to be a woman. You can say there's a right to it, but it can never happen. So what kind of right is that? It's not a right, it's a wrong. (laughs) And and wrongs aren't rights. That's why we call them rights. So then all we're left with is the mania. These people seem insane because weird sex stuff in particular drives people crazy. So perfect example of this, our assistant health secretary, is he goes by Rachel now, but his real name is Richard. So Richard Levine has, has just made, <laughs> he's just made a Black History Month advertisement in front of the colors of the Kente scarf, some kind of, you know, in a way it almost, like the shapes almost look like my show logo, but the colors are, you know, the yellow and the green and the red and the black. It's just a total black power. And he's standing there, a man dressed up like a woman, talking about how the sun monster is going to kill us all because it's racist. Hello, I'm Admiral Rachel Levine. This Black History Month, I'm pleased to partner with OMH in advancing better health through better understanding for black communities. Climate change is having a disproportionate effect on the physical and mental health of black communities. Black Americans are more likely than white Americans to live in areas and housing that increase their susceptibility to climate-related health issues. And 65% of black Americans report feeling anxious about climate change's impact. 
Through our Office of Climate Change and Health Equity and the Office of Environmental Justice, we're working with providers and community leaders to identify innovative approaches that empower communities to address the health consequences linked to climate change. Visit hhs.gov for more information and tune in next Thursday to hear from another HHS leader on how you can contribute to advancing better health for black communities. For more information, visit hhs.gov slash black dash history dash month. Produced by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Go to the government's health website during Black History Month so that a man who thinks he's a woman can tell you about the sun and the weather and how the weather hates black people and what that means for your health. More at 11. What do these things have to do with each other? We'll get to that in one second. First, though, when you want to get your business together, you got to check out Ramp. Go to ramp.com slash Knowles. When you're running a business, time is money, baby. That is why I'm so excited to have Ramp as a new sponsor of my show. If you're a finance professional looking for a better way to maximize productivity and cut wasteful spending, then Ramp could be for you. Ramp is the corporate card and spend management software designed to help you save time and put money back in your pocket. With Ramp, you can issue cards to every employee with limits and restrictions, automate expense reporting, and stop wasting time at the end of every month. Ramp's accounting software automatically collects receipts and categorizes your expenses in real time so you don't have to. You'll never have to chase down a receipt again, and your employees will no longer spend hours submitting expense reports. Get started in less than 15 minutes whether you have 5 employees or 5,000. Get 250 bucks when you go join Ramp. Go to ramp.com slash Knowles, Canada BLAS, R-A-M-P dot com slash Knowles. That is ramp.com slash Knowles, Canada W-L-E-S. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank. Members FDIC. Terms and conditions apply. Yes or no is not just a show. It's the Daily Wire's number one hit party game. I'm not bragging or nothing. But the MK merch dominates the Daily Wire shop. We've got the candles here. We've got our lovely uh, Smells and Bells candle for the Lenten season. But we've got the other candles as well, the creme de la creme and the pumpkin spice candle. And then we've got the number one hit party game with 200 cards filled with titillating topics and the ability to play up to nine people at once. You can put your knowledge of your friends and family to the test, just as I did with my friend Charlie Kirk on this episode of Yes or No. My back and knee pain have greatly improved by ignoring infomercials. <laughs> but wait, there's more. If you're like me and you also have friends who will seize any opportunity to ponder aliens, the moon landing, and conspiracy theories, don't wait to get the Yes or No Conspiracy Expansion Pack with over 110 new cards. Get the Yes or No game and expansion pack at dailywire.com slash shop, now 30% off for President's Day. Why is a man who thinks he's a woman the assistant health secretary at all? That's crazy. And then why is he standing in front of some kind of Kente design black power background to talk about climate change, to talk about the sun and the weather and meteor meteorology, sorry, my head's still a little shaken from getting rear-ended this morning. Uh, to, why? What does that have to do with each other? The answer is what unites all of those things is an attack on norms. That's what it's all about. We have a norm in America that we're one nation, that we're united, e pluribus unum. Okay, well, we got to attack that. And the way we're going to attack that is by saying that whites and blacks live in totally different nations. And we need a black national anthem and we need black power signs. And we got as blacks aren't really Americans. They're a different. They're a different kind of person. Okay. That's the, that's the first thing. Then a uh, norm would be that uh, men and women are different and one can't become the other, obviously. So we're clearly going to attack that one by pretending that the dude is a chick. And, uh, and, and, and we're further going to attack that one by elevating this person to the role of a, of a health official. So uh, typically, you know, if you think you're the opposite sex, that would that would speak to a that you have. And we're going to say, actually, that's that's this very symbol of health. And then 
uh, we, we also have a whole system of government in America it says that you get to vote for the things that you like. You get to elect representatives. They're going to pass laws. You, you have a reasonable degree of uh, political control over your country. Well, no, global warming is going to come in and say, you got to get rid of your national sovereignty. You've got to get rid of your ability to govern yourself because we're facing a global threat. The sun monster is going to kill us all. And, and so you got you got to totally upend your constitutional order and you got to outsource it to Dr. Fauci or somebody. You got to outsource it to the United Nations. You've got to you got to outsource it to all the geniuses who control the big corporations and and the intergovernmental organizations that are going to rewrite your laws for you to stop Armageddon. And furthermore, if you're not willing to do that, we're going to tell you that the sun is actually racist and is going to get, which is ridiculous, by the way, because black people don't get sunburns. So if the sun is racist against anybody, it's very clearly against white people. But I digress. You're going to say, just in case you weren't already convinced by all these other attacks on norms, uh, the sun is also racist. So we're going to further divide you there. That's what it's all about. That's what it's always about. Now, speaking of sexual politics, there is a new suggestion of a new vice presidential pick for Joe Biden. Not for Trump. There's still a lot of speculation over who Trump's running mate is going to be, but for Biden. Biden's current VP is Kamala Harris, who is one of the least talented politicians I've ever seen. She did rise to a very high level of politics, and the way she did it has been well documented, and we don't need to get into it here. But She's not impressive on the campaign trail. She's got a very low approval rating. She's obviously unfit to be the president of the United States. And she's, she's dragging Joe Biden down, if that were even possible. She's, she's at least keeping him down. So there's been a lot of chatter among the Democrats. If we can't replace Biden, at the very least, we should be able to replace Kamala Harris. So people have suggested Susan Rice. Susan Rice was the fall guy for Barack Obama in Benghazi. Remember the Obama administration pinned all of the blame for the Benghazi terror attack and the lies that they ended up telling about it on Susan Rice. So she's already got a lot of baggage going in, but she's got something going for her, which is she's a black woman. And Joe Biden said, I'm going to pick a black woman to be my VP. The reason I think this is nonsense that Susan Rice could be the VP pick is because they already had their chance to do this. When Joe Biden came out and said, I'm going to pick a black woman to be my running mate, there were three choices. There were three choices of prominent Democrat women who were black who could plausibly take on that role. The choices were Karen Bass in, in California, who's an actual communist, like has been a member of communist organizations and is, let's just say, not up to the task. Then there was Susan Rice, who is certainly much smarter and more impressive, but was the fall guy for Benghazi and just has too much baggage. And then there was Kamala Harris, who looked fine at the time. You know, her, she had a warm body. She had a beating heart. I, people thought she could form a coherent sentence at the time. So they figured, all right, I guess it's going to be her. And she still remains basically the best choice for it. You're not going to push out the first black woman vice president very easily. There are all these rumors. Maybe the Democrats will pay her a lot of money. They'll give her some giant foundation. to run. It's not going to matter. It's not, she doesn't want to get rid of that. She sees what they see. They say, oh, we can't keep her in this position because Joe Biden is on the brink of death. And she's looking at that and she's saying, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, take a walk down those stairs, Joe. Hey. <laughs> so it's just not going to happen. It, it also shows weakness on a ticket. When you swap out the running mate, it shows that you're afraid that you're going to lose. And what the Democrats are projecting is strength. And also, Joe Biden's the president. And even though the Democrat establishment seems to be done with him, he wants to keep his job. But they, the Democrat establishment is eager to push Joe Biden off a cliff. The latest evidence of this comes from Politico. This is a Politico report. Biden's brother used his name to promote a hospital chain. Then it collapsed. Jim Biden played a major role in a company called AmeriCorps, which the government is accused of massive Medicare fraud. And even though it's not quite in the headline, the Politico report goes on to show Joe Biden was a lot more involved in this than anyone thought. Now, you can see, if you're watching the show right now, you see how thick this report is. This is not just some little blog post. This is a deep investigation from Politico. Why now? We've known of all this sort of fraud for years. We've known of the, the Biden brothers shakedown scheme where they just go around and trade on their brother's name, which is to say they peddle American government influence and raise money for the Biden family. How come Politico is only reporting on this now? What did they discover? The investigation reveals that Joe Biden's name and inner circle were more involved with this company than has been understood. 
maybe understood by you. It was understood by all of us. <laughs> it was understood by anyone with, with two brain cells to rub together that the only way the Biden family was making this kind of money was with Joe's involvement. You think Frank Biden is an impressive guy? I don't think so. You think Hunter Biden is an impressive guy? I don't think so. We all understood, everyone with common sense understood that. No, now they're shocked. As much more involved and understood, in addition to the accounts provided by former executives, investor materials describe Jim Biden as an advisor to his older brother. And on top of Joe Biden's own previously reported encounter with the firm's CEO, at least three of Joe Biden's relatives did work with AmeriCorps. They include Jim Biden's wife, Sarah, and his son, Jamie. The president's son, Hunter, also met with its CEO and his personal doctor, current White House physician Kevin O'Connor, joined a meeting with Jim Biden. Wow, it's a whole family game, isn't it? This is all according to former executive and e- uh, former executives and emails obtained by Politico. This, of course, after Jim Comer, the House Oversight Chairman, found that uh, AmeriCorps uh, obviously had been very involved with the Biden family, and they found a two hundred thousand dollar check that landed in Joe Biden's bank account through this whole scam. Now, what's strange is back in October, Politico said there's no smoking gun on any of these Biden financial scandals. There's no smoking gun. Now, though, we're in February. Uh, there's a big smoking gun. We got, oh, this is shocking. Total, oh, totally shocking. You know, we're about a month or two away from the Democrats saying, hey, did you guys know Hunter Biden had a laptop? Did you? Hey, wow, guys, you're not going to believe this Politico breaking headline report. Do you know Hunter Biden was taking money from Burisma in Ukraine? Yeah, we all, we've all known this for years, and we've been yelling it at the top of our lungs till we're blue in the face, and you tell us it's all fake news until you realize that Joe Biden is so weak that the Democrats might not even be able to rig the election to beat Trump, and now you want to push him out, so now you're admitting, you're, you're gaslighting us, to use an, an overused word, and, and you're admitting the stuff that Republicans have been saying for years, and you've told us we're crazy and we're conspiracy theorists and we're kooks, and it's all freaking true, man, and the only reason they're admitting it now is because Joe Biden is in trouble. I love this report. I love that they're gaslighting us. I'm, I'm fine with it. Oh, what do you mean? You never told us that. What do you mean? You never showed us this evidence. No, no, no. We just discovered it through our political investigation. I love it because what it tells me is we have a chance. <laughs> what it tells me is they don't have this election totally locked down. If Republicans go out, if, if we can vote, if we can mobilize voters who are less likely to vote, if we can get people, if we can flood the game on the mail-in ballots, and we can get people to vote in person. And if we, then maybe, maybe we have a chance. Now, Joe Biden is not the only guy that the Democrat establishment wants out. John Oliver, an alleged comedian, a British fella, he wants Clarence Thomas off the Supreme Court, and he's willing to put up some money to do it. From stripping away women's rights to... Sixth cases you definitely shouldn't be hearing to potentially helping roll back decades of federal regulations, and you deserve a break, you know, away from the meanness of Washington, so you can be surrounded by the regular folks whose lives you've made demonstrably worse for decades now. And the good news is, I think we can help you there because since your favourite mode of travel might be in need of an upgrade, we are excited to offer you. <laughs> Brand new, top-of-the-line Prevost Marathon motor coach. Look at this beauty, Clarence. A million dollars a year, Clarence, and a brand new condo on wheels. And all you have to do in return is sign the contract and get the f*** off the Supreme Court. So, Clarence Thomas likes to travel around the country in RVs. That's It's actually really charming. This is a guy who is at the pinnacle of the legal profession, He could go on really, really fancy vacations, but he doesn't want to do that. He wants to travel around America with his wife, and it's a lovely thing. And John Oliver is saying, yeah, well, now listen here, governor. Yeah, yeah, you're going to get off the court, and we'll give you a better RV, and you get off the, get the F off the court. Which is the, I'm going to, I'm going to deconstruct this joke for you. You see, the way that John Oliver tells jokes is he yells a statement, but then puts the F word in it. You see, this is a, a similar style to comedy uh, that you see from uh, John Stewart to a lesser degree, Stephen Colbert, from, from most of the liberals now. You see, back in the old days, I was a history major in college. Back in the old days, a joke was considered to be a humorous utterance. 
It's when you would say words that in combination would induce laughter in people. Um, Today, what passes for a joke is when a liberal yells the F word really loudly. That's it. So just a completely unfunny statement, get off the Supreme Court, you say, get the F off the court! And then, and then the clapping seals in John Oliver's audience giggle about it. Uh, the liberals have always had a very special hatred for Clarence Thomas. Speaking of racial politics, it's because he's a black guy, because he was supposed to be a liberal because he's black, but he's not a liberal. So they call him all sorts of nasty names, and they, they particularly hate him. They hate him more than they hate Alito. They hate him more than they hate Amy Barrett. They hate him more than they hate Gorsuch, certainly. They hate him more than they even hate Brett Kavanaugh. It's, it's Thomas that they hate. And they hate him because he's rock-ribbed and principled, and especially because he's black. The irony of this bit, though, is they're all trying to insinuate that Clarence Thomas has somehow broken the law. He hasn't in any way. But as they are doing this, as they're making their supposed jokes, they themselves are breaking the law. John Oliver just broke a federal law because he's trying to bribe a federal judge, <laughs> which is a very serious crime. And so what I'm hoping for here, obviously one hopes and one expects that Clarence Thomas will not step down from the Supreme Court to go RV around the country. He'll probably stay on that court until his final breath. Uh, then one hopes that Trump really does have a chance and he really can win. And then Trump appoints a good attorney general. And then the, the future Trump DOJ prosecutes this limey <laughs> lunatic, John Oliver, for violating federal law. That would be mm, delightful. Right now, speaking of delightful things, is your chance to get 30% off Daily Wire Plus annual memberships during our President's Day sale when you use code DW30 at checkout. Your Daily Wire Plus membership is your backstage pass to conversations with the smartest and most trusted talent in America. It's your front row seat to the Daily Wire's upcoming hit movies and series like The Pendragon Cycle, Mr. Burcham, Snow White, and Evil Queen, and more. Right now, it is 30% off during our President's Day sale. Go to dailywire.com slash subscribe. Use code DW30 at checkout. My favorite comment on Friday is from Hard Boiled Entertainment, who says, this whole Georgia case can now be described as the Biden administration talking out of their fanny. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Bit of a groaner, but I'm a sucker for a good pun. So there you have it. There you have it. Uh, John Oliver is not the only uh, liberal comedian Daily Show alum who is losing it these days. Stephen Colbert just seemed to break character. He broke his comedic character, such as it is, to give a very serious message to the American people. I know, I know how numb we've become, but it's not normal. No other candidate for the presidency has ever had to pause his campaign to defend himself in multiple courts. And I would like to point out that in all seven of his cases, no one, no one doubts that he did these things. We're just sitting around patiently waiting to find out if the wheels of justice will grind fast enough for there to be any consequences. And the media is covering it like it's any other political story, like it's all horse race. Is there a joke anywhere in there? <laughs> there isn't. It's not even the, the liberal fake joke where you just make angry statements and yell the F word. It, there's no joke. He's just saying, this isn't normal. <laughs> this isn't normal. I hate Trump. I hate him so much. The joke is that I hate him so much, but it's not a joke to me. I'm really angry. A sign of madness, a sure sign of madness, is when people lose their sense of humor. There's a great line from G.K. Chesterton who says, the angels can fly because they can take themselves lightly. You don't want to make yourself a clown. You don't want to degrade yourself like those people who committed sacrilege at St. Patrick's Cathedral. But you don't need to take yourself so seriously all the time. You don't need to walk around all doer and angry and yelling and screaming and pulling your hair out. It's a fallen world. Bad things happen. We do our best to encourage good things to happen. We hope and we pray and we have faith and we have charity toward our fellow man. And just, you know, lighten up, bro. But these people can't lighten up because they have been driven insane, because they have been driven mad. Some people are driven mad by their sexual passion, as we talked about earlier in the show. Some people are driven mad by their political activism. Some people are driven mad by their obsessiveness 
over temporal matters. Some people are driven mad by their tastes and their appetites and all sorts of things. Don't get driven mad. You end up making a total fool of yourself, like Mr. Colbert. Now, speaking of trying to get rid of people, a major geopolitical story that not a lot of people noticed over the weekend, which is that Alexei Navalny, who was the opposition leader in Russia, he wasn't super popular, but if if Russia had an opposition leader, it was Alexei Navalny, uh, he was killed in a Russian prison. Not surprising. The, the fact that he lived this long is what's actually surprising. The Putin regime pretty clearly tried to kill him earlier when he was abroad. They tried to poison him with Novichok nerve agent, which they've used on other dissidents, and it didn't work. But then Navalny, quite heroic, he goes back to Russia knowing that he's going to be arrested and almost certainly killed. And then he gets arrested and he's brought up on trumped up charges. Now he's dead. The, the timeline here begins, uh, oddly enough, he and I kind of intersected at one point because when I was an undergraduate in school, Alexei Navalny was a Yale World Fellow. He was there right around the same time that uh, Vivek Ramaswamy was there. A lot of J.D. Vance was there. Around the same. It was kind of an interesting moment when there were a lot of, uh, I guess there were always a lot of political people around those schools. But uh, he was there in 2010. He ran for mayor of Moscow in 2013 and uh, got 27% of the vote. So not, not a ton, but he was still a leader. Uh, 2018, he was barred from running for president by Putin. Then 2020, he was poisoned with the Novichok. 2021, he goes back to Russia, he gets arrested. 2022, he has his sentence enhanced. And uh, 2023, he goes missing for three weeks. He ends up in an Arctic gulag. And then early 2024, he is killed. Uh, Very sad. You know, the man believed in something and he showed a lot of courage. And I think some people are going to try to portray him as a kind of a squish and a lib. Uh, he was not a squish and a lib. Certainly, he was a, a pretty hardcore nationalist. He softened some of his political views later on, but he was a Russian politician, and, and Russian politics doesn't map that neatly onto American politics. But all of that to say, most people don't really care about the uh, inner political fighting in other countries, even when it involves things like assassinations. And, and I get why they don't care. There are only so many things we can worry about, you know, and we're much more focused on our own politics. But that's actually why I bring up this story, because— the basic summary of what happened to Alexei Navalny is that Vladimir Putin arrested the leader of the political opposition and let him die in prison. And that is precisely what our government is trying to do right now. No difference whatsoever. Our government right now is trying to arrest has arrested the leader of the political opposition, the undisputed leader of the political opposition, much more popular than in our country than Navalny ever was in his country, um, has had a much more official role in our country, obviously, because President Trump was the president already, than a mere opposition leader in a foreign country. They've arrested him. They are, they are prosecuting him on extraordinarily trumped up charges, ridiculous stuff. I mean, you just look at the documents case. They, they, the federal government has just come out and said, we are not going to charge Joe Biden even though he did a much more egregious version of the crime that we're trying to charge Donald Trump for and to send him to prison where he can die. They were trying to send him to prison for hundreds and hundreds of years. The the man is not a spring chicken. He acts like it, but he's not chronologically a spring chicken. They are trying to imprison the leader of the political opposition in the United States and to allow him to die in prison. No difference. So I, I have a great deal of sympathy for Alexei Navalny and his family and the Russians who supported him, and all the rest. I have more sympathy. I have empathy, actually, for our own country, for what's going on here. Because, you know, there's that good old blues song, before you accuse me, take a look at yourself. Much more urgent, much more dire political problem to see what we are doing here. Now, speaking of killing people, we can end on a happy note. Well, not the killing people. Actually, the not killing people is the happy note. And Alabama, Alabama court has just rightly recognized that preborn babies are human. A uh, great, great decision here from Parker, the chief justice, who says a good judge follows the Constitution instead of policy, except when the Constitution itself commands the judge to follow a certain policy. In these cases, that means upholding the sanctity of unborn life, including unborn life that exists outside of the wombs. So we're talking about 
embryos who have been put in freezers for whatever sort of perverse scientific reason. Our state constitution contains the, the following declaration of public policy. This state acknowledges, declares, and affirms that it is the public policy of the state to recognize and support the sanctity of unborn life and the rights of unborn children, including the right to life. That's in the state constitution. Uh, as noted in the main opinion, these cases involve unborn life, a fact that no party in these cases disputes. Therefore, we examine the term sanctity of unborn life, and we find the, the, the decision goes on and on, but we find that this pertains to unborn life inside the womb and outside the womb. Obviously, a, a correct decision. It's not particularly complicated. It's right there in the state constitution, as he acknowledges. It's a simple matter of bioethics. This will greatly harm the a new human trafficking industry that has cropped up in recent years, whereby people buy and sell babies, where they order custom babies, like you would order a new dress from a shop. Uh, this is unfortunate. Uh, really, it's more than unfortunate. It's a, a, a grave error and travesty. And it is done because uh, homosexual couples want to have a child, but they know that that's not how it works, so they go buy one. Or single people want to have a child, so they, but single people, you can't, you know, make a child on your own through mitosis or something. So they go and order one out of a catalog. And it's just, it's just wrong. And it intentionally deprives a child of his natural parents and uh, often it deprives a child of a mother or a father figure. And it's just wrong. And, and it's wrong not even because of all these consequences. It's wrong because people are not objects to be bought and sold like commodities. People are proper subjects who are entitled to rights. The Alabama Supreme Court recognized it. Well, the other courts should recognize that fact too. The rest of this show continues now. You don't want to miss it. Become a member and use code Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. 